Hello, everybody. This is Chris Sevaleja from Scotch. Uh, last week on Friday, we put out a coach challenge number two, and this is going to be our second time we've done this. I think we want to do more. There was a lot of engagement over the weekend for people wanting to learn and kind of challenge themselves over the weekend. So we'll definitely try to do this every Friday, and I'll put out a solution video and article every Monday. Let's get right to it. This is the code challenge number two. We're going to build this calculator in CSS Grid. Now, if you're not familiar with CSS Grid, don't worry. We'll go through the solution right here, and we're going to see exactly how quickly CSS Grid can do this all for us. Most of the CSS here will actually be styling the calculator and the buttons itself, and there's actually, I believe, about three, four lines of CSS Grid, which is really cool that we can do all this really quickly. Here I have a code pen, and if you're not familiar with codepen.io, it's a really good place to kind of get inspiration, and it's an online code playground where you can play around with your code, and it's a good way to build out quick prototypes. So here I have a blank one. Let's change this out to the left side of our screen, and 18 pixels is good. Okay, so we don't need any JavaScript for this, and I'm gonna start in the HTML. And I will use Emmet here. We're going to have a calculator class. Inside of that, we're going to have an input, which type is number. And then right next to that, we're going to have a calculator buttons div. And then inside of that, let's do, uh, we'll say calc button. We'll have the text be a number. And then also, let's do 10 of those. And let's see how this works out. We'll hit tab. Let Emmett do its work. Perfect. We have our calculator. We have our numbers. Oh, actually, these should be buttons. So we'll select all these and button those out. Nice. OK. All right. That's going to be the HTML. And let's press Enter here and get some spacing just so we can see the grid lines, uh, the grid spacing. Here we have a clear button and a divide button. So we don't even have those here. Let's create those now. Button dot calc button. And I need to see there. And then here we'll have the divide. And I'm going to use the HTML entity here. So we have clear and divide, enter. And then next up, 789 multiply. So we'll take 789 up here. And then the multiply, which is actually and times. I was trying that with and multiply. But that didn't work. So 456 subtract. 456 subtract is next. And that's minus. And last, 1, 2, 3, plus. OK. And 10 we didn't really need, but we're going to go 0 and equals. So 0 and equals. OK, so that's looking good for our HTML. That's all we're going to do for now. Let's switch over to our CSS now. So here, I'm going to add a really quick reset, box sizing, border box. And this just basically means that our padding and all of our widths are going to calculate how we'd expect them to. Browsers sometimes do a little bit of weird padding margin addition. And if you look at Bootstrap or any of the main CSS resets, this will be in there. So let's start with our calculator. We're going to have our calculator. And inside of here, we're going to say our max width is 400 pixels. We don't want it to get too large margin. Zero auto, we will center it right in our browser. Border, two pixels solid. We need that dark black background outline. And border radius to get some rounded corners, five pixels. OK, that's looking like a good start there. Let's add to our body class. Also, we want a cool background. So we'll do background and light white, f6, 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 and FFF is white, so just a little bit offset off of white. We're going to go padding bottom, 30 pixels, padding top, 30 pixels. We don't want that thing to 
kind of just sit at the top of our browser screen. Okay, let's see next. We would like to, let's style the input here. We want that input to be full screen or the full width of our calculator. So we'll go calculator, input. And here we're gonna say background. We're pretty much gonna reset all of the HTML default classes styling here. So background is none. We're gonna go border is none. Box shadow is none. Okay, that's looking good. Width is 100%. And then let's do a border on the bottom of two pixels, solid, one, 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 and finally padding 20 pixels. Okay, that's looking good. And also text align right. Okay, and let's add a placeholder here just so it looks like we have a number. There we go. And finally, font size, let's do something giant, uh, 40 pixels. All right, that's looking good. Next, let's get to our buttons and styling these out. And notice we haven't really done any CSS grid just yet. And I know you're probably saying, well, this code challenge was CSS grid. Where's all that, all that fun stuff? But really, it's not that much code for the CSS grid. So next up, let's do calc button. And I'm styling the buttons individually, and then we'll get to the actual container calc buttons. I believe we did calc buttons, right? Let's see. Calculator buttons. And the only reason I shortened this was because I didn't want the text to kind of overflow and get too long. There we go. All right, so let's do background. We're going to do a light black with an opacity of 0 0.5. So that's basically saying RGB 000 is black and the A is for alpha, that's 50%. So that's 50% there. We're gonna make sure our border is one pixel solid, that 111, that black. So we can match the border on that padding. 20 pixels color is another light white border radius, five pixels. And font size, 22 pixels. And then let's see, when we hover over these, cursor is pointer. There we go. All right, so that's it for our buttons. Now let's get to the calculator buttons, and this is where all of the grid stuff will take place. And then notice that's a SAS comment. Normally in CSS, you do forward slash star and then star forward slash, but I'm using SAS right here. And that's just a feature that CodePen has. All right, let's get a padding of 20 pixels on the buttons just to get a little spacing around there. Now, this is where the grid stuff will happen. Let's bring that up. Now we're gonna do the grid stuff. So to get a grid started, you're gonna say display grid, just like you would say display flex, display block, inline block. We're gonna start with grid. Next, we're gonna define a grid. So we're gonna say grid template columns. And there's a couple different ways we can define a grid, but basically you're going to just create the columns right here. So let's say we wanted a couple columns, 10 pixels, 10 pixels, 10 pixels, 10 pixels. So that's four columns at 10 pixels. Notice that's not the best thing for us. Let's try to bring that up to maybe 50 pixels or 40. Okay, that's okay too, but our buttons are a little bit wider than that 40 pixels. And also a problem here is if you define your grid using pixels, it doesn't really resize based on, you know, what the overall width of your container is. So one thing that was introduced is the fraction unit. So we're going to say one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, and that will take a quarter of the overall available space. So that's really cool to do. And notice we've defined columns and to define the rows, which right now isn't necessary because as we get more items, it will just overflow into the next row. And let me give you an example here. If we have a couple more, they'll just go into the next row. Even if there's not gonna fill out a whole row, it'll just move on to the next row. But if you did have a situation where you wanted to define the rows itself, you could say grid template rows. 
And one fraction, one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. How many do we need here? One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five. We need five. And one fraction. And notice it brought out another row here. And if you do less than what is needed, it'll still overflow into new rows. So we only have three rows here. It actually created four for us. And there's actually a really cool way that we can simplify this. There's a repeat function. So we can say repeat, and we're gonna need five one fraction rows, and we're gonna need repeat four one fraction rows, or columns, sorry. There we go. Let's take a look. One, two, three, four, five. Yep, that's right. Oh. It moved on to the fifth row because these are wider, and we'll deal with that in a second. All right, what is next? Another thing we can do is I want to show you a shorthand for this. Instead of doing rows and columns separately, you could do grid template, and then you define your rows first. Repeat five, one fraction, and then also repeat four at one fraction for the columns. And that's a cool way to define a grid shorthand. And then next, let's do a grid gap of 15 pixels. And that'll get the spacing between all the buttons. All right, our buttons are looking a lot more like our final product. Let's see what's next. We need to get this clear button, this zero wider, and the equal sign colorized. But notice how quickly we built out a grid. And I'll move this out of the way. We had three lines right here to define our grid. Now compare that to what you would have to do before in CSS. You would probably have to do some random floats, maybe position some things absolutely relatively, move some margin bottoms around here. Margin bottom, uh, if you're in the last row, then there's no margin bottom since there's nothing down there to space itself from. So the CSS grid makes things really, really easy to do. And definitely check out our CSS grid article for getting started with the grid and all that good stuff. And I'm going to do a video course that comes out pretty soon, and that will dive more into the grid. So the last thing, we need our clear button, zero, and equals. So let's go up here, and I'm just going to do is clear class, just so we can target this. And then down here is zero, and is equals. Okay, nothing changed. Now, how are we going to take one grid item and make it span across three columns? Well, this is actually pretty easy, too. So we're going to say is clear. And we're going to say grid column span three. And it's that simple. Now, our clear button has spanned three columns. And another way you can do this is you can define the start column and then the end column. So let's say we wanted it to start at column two and go to column four, it will span two. So it's in column two, goes to column three, ends at column four. It doesn't go into column four. It stops there before. But another easy way, span three. And that works. And we'll do the same for the is equals. So dot is equals, or sorry, is zero. There we go. And the last thing is colorizing things is clear. And I'm just taking these colors off of uh, inspecting elements from random places <laughs> on the web. So we're going to say background uh, 3572D8. And that's a blue. Is zero. Oh, we didn't even color is zero. And we're going to say is equals is background 28D060. There we go. We have our calculator and notice it kind of shrinks and grows based on the width but our max width is 400 pixels so it doesn't have too much room to work with all right that's it for our css grid solution for code challenge number two keep an eye out for code challenge number three and thanks to everybody that participated and threw in their code pens into the comments and joined us on slack Please let me know in the comments if you like this, if you wanted to do more of these, if you want to focus on CSS JavaScript, if you learned anything from these uh, code challenges, definitely let me know, and we'll see you in the next one.